Good morning and welcome to this episode of Beyond the Photo with me, Damien Jackson. This morning I'm in the beautiful village of Gregnamana in South Kilkenny. I'm here about 20 minutes before sunrise. Now yesterday it was torrential rain and cloud and this morning it seems to have cleared but it, it's almost cleared too much and there's not a cloud in the sky so I'm not sure if I'm going to get much colour. But as you can probably see behind me the river is in flood at the moment um, it's a fine day. I'm going to spend the day here and maybe shoot a sunset as well. So thank you very much for joining me along the journey and let's get going. Great Namana is situated in South Kilkenny, right on the border with Carlow. The borderline itself is the River Barrow. The name Greg de Manna is the English derivative of the Irish language Greg na Manoc, which means valley or village of the monks. Based on an earlier settlement, much of Greg de Manna developed around the early 13th century Dusk Abbey. This was founded by William Marshall in 1204 and then was suppressed by Henry VIII in 1536. There are several monastic sites and holy wells in the town's lands of Greg de Manna and Tinna Hinch, Tinna Hinch being the Carlow side of the river. And saints associated with the areas include St Mullen and St Picre. Due to its location on the River Barrow, which was historically a significant water highway, Greg de Manna was developed as a commercial navigation base in the mid 1700s, and the town served as the main base for commercial barges operating on the river until barge traffic ceased in 1959. The commercial barges that at one time lined the quaysides are now replaced by some pleasure barges and other leisure craft. The bridge crossing the barrow at Greg na Manna, Tinna Hinch, is a seven arch humpback road bridge built between 1764 and 1767. Part of the bridge was damaged by an explosion caused by British forces attempting to halt the progress of the Irish rebels in the 1798 rebellion. So I'm at my first composition and the um, sun hasn't yet appeared but it is quite bright because as I said earlier there's not a cloud in the sky. Um, I'm looking over at the mill and you can see there's a fabulously painted blue barge there and another boat beside it. And then you have this smaller barge, um, which is moored on this side of the river. I'm trying to use that then as a foreground. Um, the sky is quite bland, so I've zoomed in a little bit to cut out as much sky as I can. So I'm shooting at F11. I have a polarizer on, and that's given me about two seconds at ISO 160. So I'll take a few here and um, see how they go. Well, if I was to do a tutorial on how not to take a photograph, this would be it. It's awful. It's way too busy. You have all the dead um, dog leaves or ferns or whatever they are and a bit of grass in the foreground there. The angle is just wrong. The boat is blocking out most of what's on the other side. And yeah, this is a disaster for a start anyway. So I think that's it from here. It's time to move on down the river a little bit. It's getting on for 10 past eight now and there's still no sign of uh, the sun coming up. Now it is late November and I think it was due up around 20 past, 25 past eight or so. But there's still great brightness in it because the sky is totally clear. So I'm gonna move on down the river and see if I can find some more compositions. So I didn't have to come far for another composition. I've just walked about 100 meters down the bank and I've noticed now that the sun is just starting to creep above the horizon. And the old mill opposite me, well I presume it's, it's an old mill with the small um, windows and the building beside it. They're catching the early morning light and then the reflection and it, it's like there's light on in the windows. 
So here's my composition here. As you can see, um, I have more room here than I had um, 20 meters up the pathway. And you can see that you have the mill on the left, a house beside that, and further down you, you have another one. But more in front of those, you have three barges and a little motorboat. And again, the reflections are fabulous, both in the river itself, but also of the um, sunrise in the windows. It's a great phenomenon that the, uh, the reflection of the rising sun in the uh, windows, it, it just looks like, you know, there's lights on in every window in each of the buildings there. Okay, much happier with this one, much cleaner image, and I really love the way the rising sun lights up the windows and it's reflected into the river as well. So yeah, good recovery, I think. So the sun has just started to come up, but um, so has the breeze and it's gone really cold. So hat and gloves have gone on. Now, as I was walking down the bank, it's really shaded down um, this area. And I noticed that the sun is hitting the far side and it's hitting the hill that overlooks uh, Greg the Manor as well. So I'm gonna head back up and maybe towards the bridge because there's a weir on the far side um, as it looks down towards the lock. And the light seems to be more concentrated in that area than it is down there. So I'm gonna head up that way and see how we get on. So just before I headed back to the other side, I got out the drone to do a little bit of video footage, which you'll see next. But I did manage to capture just one image here. Again, nothing spectacular here, but I think it gives a nice overview of the river itself and the background. And there's a lovely reflection of the bridge in the river itself. So this is the weir that I'm going to try and capture. I'll just zoom in a little bit on it. Now I won't be able to bring this camera onto the bridge because there's no footpath on the bridge. It's pretty narrow, so it's just going to be a kind of run and gun. Get up there, get the shot, and get out of there as quick as I can. I'd rate this as an okay image, uh, nothing more really. And the trees are very bare. There is a bit of nice morning light there and the tiniest bit of pink hue in the sky. But overall, I don't know, maybe the weir is not rough enough and there needs to be more action around there. Uh, it's, it's just okay. The mill that I was shooting earlier, um, the sun has come up high enough now, so it's all basking in the sunshine. And I'm just up on the bridge here, and I'm trying to get uh, an overall shot looking down the river. There's some beautiful colors now that the light is on them. And um, I'm just watching out for traffic as well, so it's kind of a... Now, here we go. Okay, that's me done here. I'll move down onto the bank now, get away from this bridge. When I processed this one, I thought it looked very uh, similar to the previous one I had taken. And uh, I also thought it was actually a bit over vibrant or over saturated. So what I did was I tried three different versions. I tried a standard black and white, and then I tried a more muted version. And my favorite of this is actually the muted version, um, which is the last one here now. If you have a minute, let me know in the comments which one you prefer. Possibly difficult to see the three of them together on a phone, but if you're watching on a smart TV or a computer monitor, <clears throat> maybe you might let me know, please. Mine is definitely the more muted colors. So I was just walking up the riverbank and I was actually going ahead for some breakfast and I look across the river, it's about 100 meters away, maybe 120. There's a heron um, basking in the sunshine and 
preening himself and I put on the 70 to 300 and I'm zoomed in on him there and I'm just hoping for something different you know it, it's fine having him sitting there um, but it'd be great if he'd spread his wings to dry himself off or maybe take off or something like that and um, it's a good distraction though because the light has gone very harsh at the moment and you know I'll probably have to wait until late afternoon now to get some more landscape shots but it's good to have something like this just to keep your interest and as I've said that he's tucked his head in under his wing so there's not much interest there but I'll give it another five minutes and see if he um, takes off for maybe spreads his wings or whatever just some little moment of magic to make it better than just them um, standing there preening himself so in the end there wasn't any magic but he did lean forward and give his wings a flap and that's when I just caught him in this position now true wildlife photographers will probably say oh yeah that's a very mundane shot but you know what it, it, it keeps you going throughout the day when you know, you're know you waiting for the sunrise, sunset, or you're waiting for the light or whatever. So, yeah, I'm happy enough with this one. So I finished up shooting at the mill side of the bridge in Greg the Manor. And when I crossed over to the weir side, it was still in shadow and um, it was still very dark. So what I've decided to do is I've come down to Mullins Mills, that's near Kells in Kilkenny. It's about a 30 minute drive from Greg the Manor. And I said I'd get a few shots here and then go back to Greg the Manor itself. Now, as you can see, you have the mill in the background and you have this lovely leading line of the weir uh, leading into it and because the river is in flood there's, there's plenty of uh, action and plenty of water here I've been here during the summer and you could almost walk across this it was so dry so here's my composition you can see I'm using this little sluice case gate or whatever it is um, in front of me maybe if you know exactly what it is and what it's for you could let me know in the comments and I'm using that as foreground and then all the way in to the actual uh, mill itself. Now the one problem I'll have is that the sunshine is on the highlights in the water and yet the mill is in shadow. So it's going to take at least two exposures. I'll expose one for the highlights in the water and the other for um, the shadow that the mill is in. So I'm going to start off with around one fifth or a quarter of a second for the water itself and then move up to one and a half seconds to capture the mill and hopefully the two of them will blend together then later on in post. Okay, there's my shot for the water and I'll just increase the, or decrease the shutter speed I should say to one and a half seconds. And there's my shot for the mill itself. Now what I have on the front of the lens, I have a polarizer on and I also have a, a three stop filter. Um, I had the six stop on earlier, but um, it was just, the water is moving so fast, it was just making a pure blur like milk. And I want to keep some texture in the water. So I've, I've just put on a three stop filter. So this one didn't work at all. It was just that it was the middle of the day and the light was too harsh. The sky was blue, there was shadows, highlights, and then you had five or six cars parked in the car park. But don't ignore this location, it has great potential. Now here's um, the same shot converted to black and white, which looks just a little bit better, I think. But if you could get here in morning, maybe at sunrise, when there's no cars there, nice little bit of color in the sky, it's a good location just for a one-off shot. For example, here are two beautiful shots taken by a friend of mine, Owen O'Donoghue, from exactly the same location, with the second one here being just a little bit to the left, a couple of 
the artist had left up where I was. But you can see the potential in these. These are lovely early morning shots. You can see the mist rising over the river, the bit of colour in the sky. And again, because it's early in the morning, there's no cars in the car park. So, you know, these are examples of what's possible at this location. So it's worth a visit. I've left a link to Owen's 500 PX site in the description and it's well worth a visit. There's some beautiful images there, so check it out. So I've arrived back in Greg the Manor after my little Ferrari over to Mullins Mills. It's getting on for 10 past two, but I can see already, I can see that the light is fading. Um, I didn't check sunset, but I'm guessing it's around quarter past four. So I'm gonna just have a quick bite to eat and I'm gonna go down the opposite side of the bridge down towards the weir, because as I was crossing even over the bridge in the van now, I could see that the light is on that side. So hopefully in the next two hours, we get a couple of shots and might even be lucky enough with a bit of color around sunset. Well, you have to be careful what you wish for. Um, the clouds have really come now and it's kind of gone really overcast. Now there's still a little bit of a sun in the sky and hopefully it might um, change and get a bit of color into it. As you can see, I'm coming down the other side of the bridge and uh, God, the river is really in full flow. I don't think this this poor guy will be going anywhere soon. Whatever happened, not sure, but well under the water there. So I reckon this this little fella here could be worth a shot. Kayla Marie. I just like the wine and the blue on it and it obviously looks a bit older than some of the rest of them. Now the problem is it's moving a lot so I don't think uh, a long exposure is going to work too well. Unless I try a double exposure where I do one for the boat itself or the barge itself and another for the water then. So here's my general composition. It will be a bit different obviously with the crop on the stills camera towards the video. Again, it's not very imaginative. Um, there's still some beautiful colors on the trees in the far background, but the light has completely died. So they're not sparkling out as much as they should. And as you can see, that boat is wobbling all over the place. So look, I, and betwixt and between whether there's a, a photograph here or not. I do like the moss on top of the wall all the same. So I think I'll just give it a go. I'll try a blend of two exposures, one to keep the boat sharp and the other to smooth the water because that's the only bit of creativity I can think um, while I'm here in this flat light. Now as luck would have it, the light has suddenly come back out again. And here I am struggling, trying to get my composition. So you can see, I don't, I'm not sure if you can see it on that camera, but the difference the bit of light makes to the, um, the trees in the background that still have the yellow color on them. So I'm just trying a one second exposure first. I don't think I'll even get away with a second. The boat is just moving too much. No, it's just moving too much. So I think I'll go the opposite way altogether. I'll put on a, um, a stronger filter and totally smooth the water and then take a sharp one for the boat. So here we go. I think this one worked out well. Two images blended together. One to put a nice smooth finish on the water at eight seconds and the other one at one fortieth of a second to keep the boat still. I was blessed with a little bit of light that popped out and lit up the background, the trees and that, and just brought that vibrance into the whole image that was just flat a few minutes earlier. I will say that this file did require a bit of editing. Obviously there's the two images blended together, and if you're not familiar with how you do that, you bring both into Photoshop. For this one, I brought the long exposure image in on top of the, um, the short one, and then I used the layer mask on it. 
From there, I used a black brush to actually paint away the top layer until the sharp boat underneath. After that, it's a case of using the raw file to its best and, you know, bringing out the vibrancy and the colors within it. And if you're used to my videos, you'll know that, that I really emphasize the power of the raw file throughout. So I explored down around the lock and went down a little further, but you know, the light went flat and to be honest, I really couldn't find another composition. So as I was walking back, I just got a tiny little bit of light over the bridge and I took this quick um, shot here. I didn't record it or anything, but look, nothing great, but a nice one to round off while it was um, a nice day out. To finish up, here's a slideshow of some of the images that I captured today. Nothing magical about them, but some nice photographs in there. And, you know, you can see how if the light had to be better today, that there are opportunities in Greg the Manor. And you know what? It's easy access. So that's it from me from Greg the Manor. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please leave a like or a comment below. It really helps YouTube to spread around the video a little bit more and that then will help me to develop the channel. Today was a bit of a mixed bag. Some nice light this morning particularly the reflections off of the windows and the way the mill and the barges reflected into the river. But again the sky was pretty clear. I was hoping for some clouds this afternoon and you know be careful what you wish for because the blanket cloud came in and the light went totally flat. So look I hope that there'll be something when I get home and have a look at these on the PC. You've already seen them, I haven't. Um, I hope they, there was something there anyway. But one way or the other I enjoyed getting out, I enjoyed the day. So until next time stay safe and bye for now.